Yay! I think, I think it's going to work. And we're going to see because it's going around and around. <gasps> there we go. It's working. Woohoo! First time doesn't succeed. Try, try again. So I'm sorry it is now 10.02. I did start at 10 o'clock, but Facebook decided I needed to try it again. So here I am trying it again. Um, good morning. It is July 10th, 2020. And um, today I'm going to draw some unicorns with you for Fun Art Friday. My name is Gwen Sacconi and I'm an art teacher on vacation uh, for the summer and I just thought it'd be really fun to, um, to do some drawing classes on Friday. So um, just grab some markers or colored pencils or crayons or whatever you want. Um, or maybe some oil pastels. Actually, this, this, for, this one, this one here, um, I actually did in oil pastels. This one I did in markers. I'm gonna be working in markers today um, and I hope that uh, you can follow along with me. So, um, unicorns, of course, are mythical creatures, which means they don't actually live. Um, I'm wondering if I have some comments here, because I'm not seeing, oh, there we go. Um, let me see if I can get my comments on here. Give me just a minute. Uh, no, that's fine. Comment moderation. All right, if you're watching me, go ahead and say hello. So, oh, here we go. Good, 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 good. They're good, you're here. Awesome, hi Kylie, hi Madeline. It's good to see you guys. If anyone else is here, say hello. I love to see you because then we can interact with each other. So if you were, if you watched last week's, you'll remember that we, um, we actually made a teddy bear. This was the one I did live. And, um, and this was inspired by Madeline. Today, we're going to do um, unicorns. And these are unicorns drinking a unicorn frappuccino, which was inspired by um, Kylie, my niece. And so if you have an idea that you would like to see me draw, please send those, uh, those in in the comments, or you can email me at gwensaconi at um, truthbranchart.com, and I'll have that later on in the comments. Also, if you want to share your pictures, join my private group. It's called Fun Art Fridays, and it's for all of you who watch this and who do the art. It's a place for you to post, and it is a private group, so I only let people in who are going to be part of our group. I'm not going to just let everybody see it. I mean, you can post things yourself if you want, but if you just want to limit it to our groups, so you show it to me and um, I can make comments and that would be really fun. So um, I'm gonna, let me just see. I can put my comments down a little bit here. So cute. Yes, thank you. I'm glad that you like them. Um, so we're today we're doing unicorns, and of course we know unicorns are really unique individuals. They do well. One, they're they're mythical, so which means they're actually from our imagination, but um, they're always seen as very special and and actually kind of because there's only a few of them. Even in in mythology, there's always it's always seen that they're very special, and um, sometimes they're pure white, but sometimes you'll see them with color colorful um, names and tails. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna create a matching um, frappuccino for it. And then we're also going to create a colorful background. Um, there's actually a very famous um, tapestry that has a unicorn in the center and the unicorn has a garden. He's in the middle of a garden and the garden is all around him with lots of flowers. And so I'll post that in the, um, in the group and you'll be able to see that picture. I'll also post a link to my daughter's, um, she made a very short animated feature about a unicorn and I'll post that too so you can see it later on. So without further ado, I hope everybody has something to draw with. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to, um, I'm gonna just take me a minute for me to flip these things around. Alrighty. So has it started raining wherever you are? If it started raining 
where you are, say, say yes um, in the comments. It has not started raining here, but it's very cloudy. So I'm gonna push this around. Got some books and things like that. Whoops, oh no. And just remember, I do this every Friday, but if you're not available, because say you go away, or you're busy with your friends or something like that, I always post it on Facebook, and so you can watch it. Um, I'm gonna turn off the notifications because I don't think we need to listen to um, lots of buzzes and beeps uh, while we go. <laughs> so uh, I wanna put my attention towards you. So um, I have, I tried to get my, my picture my um, things a little bit closer for you today so hopefully you'll be able to see it even better now the unicorn is a little bit more complex than the teddy bear that we did last week so if you're trying and you're having a hard time getting it don't worry just try it a couple of times so if you want to do it in pencil first you can and then erase but honestly I like to try it with markers or uh, crayons because you can't erase and you just have to work with what you got um, and then and remember to try to create every day I'm wearing my create every day t-shirt I'm gonna wear it every time because I want to remember remind you that it's great to be creative and it doesn't matter what you make or what you like to make it's um, we're be, we've been created to be creators we've been created in God's image and God is the creator and he has created us to make beautiful things so let's get started all right so I'm going to put my hand here and that's how to help me know I got to leave some space for that frappuccino the frappuccino is going to sit over here I'm also going to come down about I usually like to come down about a hand space to give myself some room to, to go and um, oh uh, Kylie said it actually is raining already where she is and Reagan's getting on. Good, Reagan. I'm glad to see you. And uh, hopefully Peyton is going to get on. We have about six people watching us right now, so that's great. Glad people came and joined. If you want to say hello, you're welcome to say hello in the comments. All right, so here we go. We're going to give ourselves some space. And I'm going to start with the book. What makes a unicorn a unicorn, right? It has to have that horn. And it's kind of like a spirally horn. So it's a little, you can't just draw a triangle. You could draw a triangle and then put stripes in it, but I'll show you the way I do it. I create like a teardrop. So I'm going to start, make a dot, and I'm gonna make my teardrop, it's gonna go at a slight angle. So I'm kind of going angling uh, in this way. So I make my teardrop, say this comes down as an angle, it has a round bottom and it comes up just like that. Do you see that little teardrop? And now to make it look like it's the, the horn is spiraling around, I'm gonna make another kind of teardrop shape except it's not gonna have the top to it. So I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna start just a little bit in from the top. Actually, no, I'm not gonna start a little bit in. I'm gonna start right at the curved edge. I'm gonna go down a little bit and around, boom. That's one shape, one spiral. And then I'm going to come down and around and do it again. And each time my horn gets just a little bit wider. Now, if you want to keep a really skinny horn, you can just don't make it wider than the one before. I kind of like the thicker horn. It looks like it's not gonna come off his head. So I'm gonna make one more spiral. And this one's gonna be just a little thinner on the bottom, but still kind of come around. All right, so there's your horn. So now we have to make the unicorn's face. So we're going to come almost straight down from the very bottom edge of um, that horn. So, you, But I, what I do is I kind of keep a little bit of a curve as I'm doing it. So you'll see as I do it, I'm kind of, I'm coming down and it's relatively straight, but it has this slight little curve to it. But if you want to just make a straight line, that's fine too. Okay. And then when I make it about, well, mine's about three fingers wide, make it as long enough to make sure I have room for the face. Then I can start curving that line up. 
kind of looks like the letter J backwards. And then I'm going to make, I'm gonna come in just a little bit and start another line. And this is gonna be, because I'm making the mouth. This top part becomes the mouth. And then I'm gonna come around and back up towards the top. If you want to, you can just kind of make it go straight up. Or if you wanna give it a little bit of a jawline, you can actually add a little bit of an extra curve there. That would be the jawline. But if you want to make it just straight, like I made it on this one, I just made it kind of straight going up. It's really okay either way. Now I want to make uh, the top of the of the um, of its head, and I can either make um, I usually make a little curve line there, and then kind of another teardrop shape, but not the bottom of the teardrop for the ear. So it's sort of coming like a teardrop up and a teardrop down. And then I usually make, I kind of copy that same line to go inside of it, like that. Okay, so there's his ear. Now, he does have two ears, which you could draw, but usually you see their big flowy mane. So instead, we're gonna draw the big flowy mane. Now, you can either make the mane go, um, you can make that mane as long as you want. Um, on the, this one, I actually just kind of made it a little tuft where he kind of comes up here, and that's what I'm gonna do for this drawing. But if you wanted, you can make it really long, you could, and what you could do is make it stop here and then start again on the other side to make it longer. But I'm just gonna make a little one. It's gonna have a little tufty mane right there. And if you want to give it a little back and forth to make it look more like hair, you can, or you could just make it like, again, like a, um, a teardrop shape. All right, um, I make one more teardrop shape on the face. Actually, two more to make the face. So first thing is I'm going to make I'm going to make an eye, and I try to line that eye up sort of in that space above the jaw, underneath the um, the horn. So somewhere around in here. And do you see how I, I actually point sometimes to spaces? That can really help if you're not really sure where you want to put something. You know, kind of put your finger there first and say, hmm, does that seem right? And that way you can you can be more confident about when you draw something. So you take your time. You don't have to rush. This is you have all the time in the world. You know this is not a this is not a race. Okay, this is Coney went out running this morning, and I want it to be fast. But I'm not going to be fast for my drawing. I'm going to take my time and try to do the best job that I can. All right. So I'm going to make my teardrop shape one more time. Okay. Now. If I wanted to, I could make the eye completely closed. See how I make the clo close there and I just put some eyelashes on it? Or I can um, make it open. I can make it looking up. I can make it looking sideways. I can really make, you can make the eyes go in any direction that you want. All right. So I'm gonna make the eye looking like it's going sideways. I'm gonna make a little bit of an eyelash going across. I'm gonna make a little line going across here some, with a curve for some eyelashes. Here's some music, that's my son. Okay, and then I'm gonna make a little sideline here and that's the eye. And then one more teardrop and that's the nose. It's actually the nostril because this whole area is, is where the nose is. And so they have a nostril. And again, I make a little teardrop shape. This one's much smaller than the eye. And I usually just color that in because that's pretty much the way you see a horse's nose. So that, there we go. So now we have the face and now we can get started on the rest of it. So we have a curved line that comes, that arcs over here and stops sort of around the, it kind of lines up with the bottom edge of the mouth. So I'm going to do that. Now, you have to remember I'm drawing at an angle, so it might not look exactly like my first one, but I'm not gonna worry about it because again, it can be a little different. It's an imaginary unicorn. It doesn't have to be like exactly real, right? It doesn't have to look like an actual horse. And um, so there's, there's the back of his neck. And now I'm gonna create the front part of his neck. And I'm gonna start that right here in this little corner where the jawline changes. And again, I'm gonna curve, it's gonna curve this way and back that way again. It's almost like an S curve that I'm going to do. And I'll show you 
it, I kind of take my time and I'm going to curve it down like this. And then I curve around to kind of show the, the, the body. Okay, it's getting um, where it looks like we're going to be running out of room here. So I'm going to have to pick it up, pick it up the pace here. Let me get, get a book so you guys can see. You're going to be able to see this. Okay. <laughs> when I tried it earlier, it all worked in because I had it set up slightly differently. So give me just a minute here so that I can make sure that you're going to be able to see the bottoms of the legs. Okay. See, you know it's live video because I'm, I'm moving things around during this. Okay, so here we go. And hopefully some of you might be already drawing. And if you're not drawing now, I hope that you, you go ahead and you practice this afterwards. All right. So then I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make some legs. I'm going to make his front legs first. So I'm going to make some front legs. And for to make the front legs, you can um, just, you're going to make basically make two parallel, almost parallel lines. Um, you're going to have one, um, and it doesn't matter. You can either make them angling straight down. You can make them kind of sli like slightly angling out. Either way, it can work. Um, I'm going to make them basically going up and down for this one. So I'm going to have one. Oh, I changed my I changed my marker. Oops. Let's keep them one color. Hmm. I'm just going to go right over it. See, I made a mistake. I covered it up. All right, so I'm going to go straight down towards the bottom here. And maybe, maybe I made him a little bit too tall because I don't have a whole lot of room for his legs. And I'm going to make a little flat line going across the bottom. And I know you can't quite see that, but there's, there it is. Okay. And then I'm going to go back up. Now, sometimes it's easier. Some people have an easier time point, like lining it up from top to bottom to make a straight line, or you can do it from bottom back up to the top. So there's one leg. Okay. And then I'm going to make another leg basically doing the same thing down. Go across on the bottom, coming back up. Okay. And then we're going to make the body. And let me move it over a little bit so we got room for the body. All right. So at the back of this neck here, we're going to make the body. Now the body of a horse or a unicorn has a little bit of an arc right in here, kind of swoops down and then goes back up around their rump. Now, if you want to just make a straight line, you can make it straight. If, if the curve is kind of hard to do, just make it a straight line. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to make this one a little bit straighter than I made that one. I'm going to make this one a little straighter. He just arcs up a little bit. And then I'm going to come back and around here to show the end of him. Now, once this, the back of his, the, his rump actually kind of comes into his leg. So I'm going to show you how that happens. It, it, again, we're making this kind of S curve. It's actually, a, I guess, a backwards S, but it's, a, they call it an S curve in art, in arty land. Okay. And so then I curve that back around the other direction, try to line it up with these legs. It's going to be up a little bit higher. And then I make a straight line angling down, bottom across, coming back up. And now when I line it up here, I'm going to make a curve line here because the back legs of a horse are very thick up on the top. It's actually like their upper, almost like their upper arm of their of their leg. It's like really thick. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. And now we have uh, their belly. And horses, and they can have pretty good bellies, but you can make them pretty skinny, so it's really up to you. Um, but it's going to start, the belly will start at the, at the top of the front leg, and it's going to work its way about midway through this curve. Like that. Now we're going to make one more, one more leg in, in the back here. And we're going to sort of copy 
or echo, I should say, this same curved line. And then we're gonna go straight down and then go across, boom. Okay, and again, I know it's a little hard to see all of the, all of this legs here. I wish that I had this up a little higher. <laughs> I probably should have started the, um, the unicorn up just a little bit higher. It's really kind of tricky to draw sideways. So I'm learning like you're learning, I'm learning too, so it's all good. Um, so now we're going to make the beautiful flowy mane and the beautiful flowy tail. So to make a beautiful flowy lane, mane, sorry, you're gonna start right behind the ear. And again, you're gonna curve up, bend down and up. It's almost like a little uh, little mountain. They call that swing, no, little mountains. Um, and then what I do is I make little angles as I go down. So I start, this is a point, I go, I curve down, I curve back up, curve down, curve back up, curve down, back up, go down, go back up, and then I can just end sort of somewhere in the back. Just got a really big mane. So that mane's like taking over half of this, <laughs> this unicorn. And then it could also have a tail. Now I trimmed off the back of this paper and I probably shouldn't have because my drawing has now gone across it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw it for you. So I usually like to make a really big flowy tail. Okay, and the way I make my big flowy tail is, hi, I see the Gilmore, the, hi Vera. It's good to see you here too, awesome. Um, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, oh, I'm allowed to make, I can make emojis? I didn't even know I could make emojis. See, I'm learning things all the time. So anyway, I'm gonna make the tail. And I love to make a great big flowy tail. And the way you make the great big flowy tail is you're gonna start kind of, Mm, towards the top of the rump, but it's actually starting to curve down a little bit. So you don't want to be too, you don't want to cut it coming out of the back. Okay. And you don't want it too far down because, you know, things have to happen down there. <laughs> anyway, you start around here. <laughs> too much information. This is a coney. Okay. So we're going to curve up and then around and down again. So we got that. See how that S curve is happening again? Woo! Okay, and then I'm going to uh, get pretty close at the base of the tail. So it's thinner here, but then as it's going arcing down, I want it to not be, I want to leave plenty of room for the flow. So I'm going to start turning it a little sooner. And then when I start aiming towards here, if I want again, get a little bit of that rough edge of the, of the um, I can go back and do the little zigzags there at the back like this. You see it? All right. <laughs> okay, so um, give me a minute. Let me see if I can get just a little bit, set this up so you can see it. Let's see, if it's a little bit further back, we should be able to see everything. So the next part, of course, is the decorating, which is super fun. Oh. And to draw the frappuccino, we gotta draw the frappuccino. So let's get that on here. Do, do, do. Frappuccino. Hmm. Okay. So I can get back a little bit. Oh, this is such a fun adventure. Have you been learning new things over the summer? Who's been learning new things? Because we have to, you know, we have to be creative with all this stuff, we can't do all the normal things maybe that we've done in the past. We have to be creative. And that's part of the reason I got online is so that I could do these with you and we could be creative together. So let's see. Is that working out a little bit better? Hmm. Still a little bit low. So anyway, let's go ahead and make the frappuccino and then we can decorate. Super fun part. And you know, if you're drawing, you can keep either keep drawing what you're doing, or if you want to take a break, watch me, and then uh, keep drawing. You can do it that way too. Either way works for me. Okay. And again, if you're here, if you say hi, then I know you're here. So because um, I know Vera's here, I know uh, Kylie is here, and Madeline is here. I know there's a couple more people. If you want to say hello, I'd love to say hello to you. When I was growing up, we used to have this thing called romper room, and they used to always say hello to certain people, and 
they didn't have the internet so they didn't she didn't actually know who was watching her and i was always really sad because she never said hello to gwen and i would be very happy to say hello to you so if you're here and you say your name um <laughs> okay you've been learning kylie is telling me she's learning fifth grade volume i'm not sure what volume is so you're gonna have to tell me what that is okay time for the frappuccino so this was frappuccino unicorn frappuccino was the inspiration for this drawing so what makes a unicorn frappuccino seem like a unicorn well it's got that big fluffy cream on the top which is kind of like a unicorn horn so we're gonna start with that and we're gonna line it up so that the top of the uh, of the uh, frappuccino sort of lined up with the um, with the snout and we're gonna do the same it's kind of like the same we did with the horn except we're gonna make it a little bit bigger a little bit wider okay so we're gonna start with that teardrop shape like that and if it's a little bit it doesn't have to be perfectly even on both sides because honestly when you get it from Starbucks not always even on both sides so don't worry about that and again I'm gonna make each tier a little bit wider than the one before it especially because I want to make a really nice big cup so I'm gonna make I'm gonna get make and make four and you can see this is a lot bigger than the horn <laughs> but do you see how it's a similar shape yeah and now I'm going to make the sides. When you make the cup sides, you basically can make a straight line going down. It can either be perfectly up and down or it can make it a slight angle. So we're going to come, you come right towards the edge of your foam. Get that nice wide cup. I'm going to bring it down almost all the way to the bottom of the paper. And there I go at the very bottom. I make a little curve. Okay, again, if you left a little more space down here, that's probably a good idea. I just sort of ran out of space. So these things, these things happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is crazy. This is a really crazy woman. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just not being able to get this exactly angled up the best for you. I want, I'm trying to get it so you guys can see it better. So I'm thinking if I go back a little bit more, you're going to be able to see it just a little bit better. And I think I'm just going to hold it with my hands. Okay, so the next part of this is we're going to make the, the uh, what's the other part of a unicorn frappuccino? Oh, okay. So, um, Great volume is lots of colors. I've been learning fifth grade X, IXL, which is fifth grade math. And what is that again? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking, but that's okay. Um, if I didn't answer your question, um, Vera, just let me know if you have a, if you have an actual question um, about part of the drawing. I'm happy to answer your questions. So what I did is I picked um, about. I picked about five colors and I tried to pick colors that I think are close to each other in the color wheel, which we call analogous colors, and they always go nice together. If you want to make a rainbow, you could make um, all of, you can make rainbow um, uh, and rainbow mane. If you don't want to make a colored mane, you don't have to make a colored rain. But if you want it to be like a, a rainbow frappuccino, you're gonna wanna make colors because that's what a rainbow frappuccino is. It's a frappuccino that has all these swirls of colors in them and they're really fun. Um, so how we're gonna, we're gonna actually start with the frappuccino and we're gonna make the, the unicorn, boom, unicorn match our frappuccino. So I'm gonna actually start with a color that goes in the middle of this which in my case because I have five colors and you don't have to use five colors you can use as many as you want I'm going to use pink to start with. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a nice little swirly line so this is a swirly line not too much swirling like don't make them swirl around okay just make it kind of curve up and down sort of like a roller coaster so kind of imagine a roller coaster my son Angelo got to go to Hershey Park this week. He got to go on roller coasters. That was fun. So um, I make one line, and then I'm going to make an echo line. 
So I go down and however thick I want it to make, I make an echo line. Now when I make the echo line, it does not have to be exactly the same thickness the whole way through. Matter of fact, it kind of looks fun if you make it a little bit thinner at spots and a little bit thicker at spots. Sort of like that. Isn't that fun looking? Yeah. And so then I can, and once I've made my two lines, then I can color that in. Now I like to start in the middle because then I have the most space to um, to make my really cool, fun roller coastery line, and then the other lines and swirls that are going to be in my frappuccino are going to be like it. They're going to echo it. Because as we know, when things echo, they repeat, but then sometimes they slightly change a little bit. So let's watch that happen. Okay, so now I'm gonna go towards the purples. I'm going to make another echo line. And maybe I'm gonna make, maybe I'm gonna make it really skinny in this part, but then I'm gonna make it really fat in that part. Hmm, and just so that I have a border, I'm going to make another line next to the red. It's actually almost like a raspberry color. And again, you can use whatever colors you have available to you. Um, or whatever media you like. But I do try to, um, you know, you want to make sure that when, you do, when you're doing coloring that you try to cho choose colors that go together nicely. Of course, if you want it themed like, a, you know, a particular sports team, you could pick their colors. I know there's some fans of different sport teams that that watch that are probably watching today and for this last section i actually don't need to make a, a line at all i just need to i'm just going to color this in and this is another purple this is like a blue purple always trying to go a little bit slower around the edges of things and then you can go fast in the middles so i kind of go around and like this and actually it has started raining here as well I can hear the rain hitting the um, hitting the roof so it's a perfect day to be inside drawing yay thank you guys for joining me um, and Olivia's drawing yay hi Olivia I'm glad you're drawing with me good to see you well actually I don't get to see you but you get to see me so that's good I just know you're here um, all right now we're going to go towards uh, we're gonna go the opposite direction so we started with red and so if we're gonna go opposite direction of red the next color is going to be an orange so we're gonna make again that echo line And again, the echo line doesn't have to be exactly the same. Then it makes it, it actually makes it more, look more like the, the swirls of the frappuccino if you don't make them even. Because honestly, who has even swirls in a frappuccino? It just doesn't happen. So I'm going to color that one in. Oh, this marker's getting a little bit dry. And maybe you have markers that are a little bit dry too. But that's okay. It's still a pretty color. Even if it's dry, it's still a pretty color. These were my daughter's markers. So they've they've gotten a lot of use over the years. We have a lot of fun with drawing in our house, you might imagine. And then my last one is gonna be, um, it's actually not quite a yellow, but it's a yellow orange. So it's going from orange to kind of yellow orange. The first orange was a very pinky, almost orange. Some might even call it pink. It's like a coral color. And then I'm gonna fill in that last thing. Now the thing to remember, now that I've established my, um, my pattern, I'm gonna use these same colors on the, um, the mane and on the tail. 
I may or may not have room for all five colors, but we'll see. Okay, so now I have, I actually left my markers open so that it's a little easier to do this again. So here we go. We're going to start again in the middle. We're going to start with the kind of reddish color. Maybe this is the, oh, actually, this is the darker color. And this was the red one. And then this one. And then finally this one down here. Then I have the other purple. Now, I could make this entire section all purple, but that's a lot of purple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up. So I'm going to, again, make another line here. And if I think of this as a pattern, I'm going to go all, the, I can either, I can go back to doing this one. I could go back to doing this one if I wanted to, or I could even maybe go a different direction in the color wheel. So maybe I decide instead of getting pur a purple that I'm going to go right to blue. And that's what I'm going to do. Now you do not have to use my colors. You do not have to use my order. This is just suggestions. This is just to get the creative juices going, okay? And now I'm looking at the picture, I'm realizing we're missing an important part, but we'll, I'll, we'll draw that back in. First, let's finish this coloring. Okay, so let's get this coloring going here. And this time I'm going to make a really thin line here, and then another thin line here. And another thin line here and oh this on the main we don't quite have room for all of those colors so that one we only had room for three and that's okay you can do that too so um and i'm going so now i'm going to make another stripe and this time i'm going to make it again going in the middle so that i have kind of a middle color to work from and again sorry about this torn paper i wish trying to be efficient and helpful to myself and instead I made it worse so we learn each week that's important to remember that everybody learns your teachers are learning your parents are learning things we're always learning things you never stop learning things so it's good to be a good learner and keep your mind active and learn new things and push yourself be a little hard at times sometimes it might even make make you have a little tear a little cry because it's so hard but when you push yourself through hard things then you're going to you're going to be really happy in the end and you're going to help other people too so when this all started mrs sacconi didn't know how to do lives I didn't know how to go live on video. As a matter of fact, I didn't know how to teach any lessons on video. But I had to because I had to teach my students different art things at Redeemer. And, uh, and we did. And it was fun. And so that's why I thought it'd be fun to do some in the summer as well. Okay, let's see. Is this this color? Yes. Okay. I can't wait to see yours. Yours might be, they might be better than mine. <laughs> but I won't cry if yours are better. No, they'll be just different. We'll all have really different ones and that's what's really fun about them. Now, um, actually two things I forgot to draw. One of the things I forgot to draw is the hoofs. 
So basically, if you want to draw hoofs on the bottom of your of your paper, um, you're just going to, uh, you can either make it just completely a straight line across or a horizontal line, or if you want to make it a little bit more accurate, you want to make it a slight angle line. So it's slightly angling down this way. Is this the right marker? Here we go. And so I'm gonna do slightly down, but if you make it just straight across, you know, honestly, it doesn't look that bad either. Either one, it all works. And then you can give them any color hoof that you want. They could stay white, they could be black, they could be pink. You can make it any color you want. I'm just gonna leave them white for right now. Okay, and then the other thing I'm gonna draw in that I almost forgot is the very important thing, how is this how is this unicorn going to drink this frappuccino? What is it missing? Yes, Kylie says it. We are missing the straw to the frappuccino. She just saw it two, month, two minutes ago. I just saw her comment. And so we're gonna draw a curved, slightly curved line, one, and then move over just a little bit and make a parallel line curving over so that it can drink the frappuccino. Now, if you want to put the little dome over it because you're really into Starbucks, you can go ahead and do that. I am not going to do that because I don't want to ruin my beautiful, <laughs> my beautiful whipped cream with a cup. I like it to be open. So that's what mine is going to be. Now, a couple more things I want to do. I want to, um, I'm going to color the eyes. And I'm also going to give it a little color on its eye eyeshadow. So um, I'm going to give it like a pink, little pink eyeshadow there. You can use whatever color you want to give yours some pink eyeshadow. So there is a rainbow frappuccino with a rainbow um, unicorn. However, it's a little boring in the background, don't you agree? <laughs> Kylie loves Starbucks. Who doesn't love Starbucks? Um, I just don't love their prices. But anyway, um, we're going to put some flowers back here. So we're going to imagine that this unicorn is drinking its rainbow frappuccino in a beautiful rainbow flowery garden. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some flowers. We can make some pretty simple flowers. <clears throat> um, I'm going to make five, uh, five petaled flowers, which I'm just going to make a little loopy shape. So watch. They're also, actually, it's still teardrops, but it's teardrops kind of going the opposite way. So there's one teardrop, right? Two, three, four, five. Now, if you want to make more than four or five, you can. You can make four or less. You want to have at least four petals. You can make six petals. You can make 10 petals. You can make as many petals as you want. I like five. Five is a nice number. It's like, kind of like a star. Um, so I'm going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one color at a time and I'm going to put a whole bunch of the, that one color around. So, um, so I'll put one over here, two, three, four, five. Sometimes when you're drawing it, you can actually kind of color while you draw. So there's one here. I'm going to put one over here. I'm gonna put one over here. Okay, I'm gonna put one over here. And another one over there. Okay, and so I'm gonna have a, a little bit of that each pink one somewhere on my paper. Now I'm gonna take another color. Now you, I like to use the same colors that I use drawing it. So again, there's what we call unity in your picture. When you kind of repeat some of the same colors, it makes everything kind of coordinate and go together. It's like when you're matching your clothes or your bedroom. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna make some petaled, five petaled pictures here. And I try to, Put them sort of all around the space. Oops, that one had a long petal. Huh. But I don't worry about it. Okay. Maybe this one's gonna be tiny little petals. Okay. Maybe one here in the ground in between. One over here. And by doing one color at a time, I can make sure that I'm balancing the paper. 
on making sure that I use things in all of the spaces. Okay, now I'm gonna get another color. Let's get this color. I would say you wanna use at least three colors in the background. You can do more. You can do less. Well, not much less, but I would do at least three. Three is a nice number. And again, I try to distribute the color, the, these three colors in between each other. And again, I don't worry if some of my petals sort of are not pretty shapes. I just try my best. Okay, so that one, that one looks a little, that one looks a little funky, doesn't it? So there you go. They almost look like stars, which is kind of fun, right? Um, last thing, I grab some greens. Now I actually have two different greens because I like to use different colors um, on the different petals. And I find if I put three three leaves, that that's kind of a nice number. Two just doesn't feel like enough. Four is certainly acceptable, but I would probably put at least three. And so I'm gonna find all of the same colored um, uh, flowers and I'm going to put the three petals on it and a petal shape of course is is um, a curved line up and a curved line back down it's it's very much I mean a leaf shape it's very much like a petal shape so I'm just going to find all these little pink ones and I'm going to put three petals on them three petals three petals so our family is planning to go camping today, but it's raining. So we're hoping that the rain will clear up and we can still do our camping trip. <laughs> Mr. Rockwell says his horse Polo has yet to grow a horn. Well, maybe you're not feeding Polo the right kind of food. And we know, Larry, that unicorns are very unique. And so, you know, very unusual. So it's hard to find them. So you just might have to draw one instead. <laughs> and so now I'm going to look at the, um, the actually I'm gonna do the orange ones and I'm gonna put some little, I used a slightly different green for the orange ones. And I'm gonna make, because these are slightly smaller flowers, I'm gonna make the leaves a little smaller. Two, three. I just try to balance out, again, I'm just trying to balance out the picture to give it a sort of a nice pattern. And then for the last ones, I'm actually going to use, I'm gonna take one more green. I like using all these different greens. And for these, these instead of make, making regular petals, we're gonna make it look like there's vines coming off of them. So I'm gonna have like a, a curved line that swirls like this and a curved line that swirls like that. And that's gonna come out here and I can make it come out in different directions. I kind of fill in. What I love about doing this design, can you see it? Is that um, it, it, helps, it helps fill in the space. And it fills it in in kind of a fun way. It adds some action, actually adds some movement to your picture. And so I can make this one here. And this one can swirl around here, and this one's going to swirl around here. Do you see how I have them kind of swirling in and out of the spaces? Sometimes people will also put some dots. Like they might put like three dots next to the ends of something, and um, just adds a little bit of a pattern. Our brains love patterns. We love seeing repetition. It makes our it makes it feel like things go together. And, um, and honestly, that is just part of the way we are built as humans. We want things to feel like they all go together and that they, um, they work with each other. Now that I'm drawing this, I feel like over in here, I could probably use another um, couple of, of uh, flowers, maybe, maybe another one of these flowers. Um, and you know, maybe over here, I'm gonna add another flower. So sometimes once, when you, when you draw the design, then after you start adding things, you'll say, oh yeah, I really could use a little bit more. Um, where is the other one? Over here. And that helps balance it out. So here we go. Here is our rainbow. I'm gonna just put this down now. 
Here is our rainbow frappuccino unicorn. You, you, fra, unicorn frappuccino. <laughs> our rainbow unicorn frappuccino unicorn. Okay, or drinking a unicorn. So there we, so there we go. Um, and uh, well, go, go, I'm glad, Larry, that your your horse is unique because <laughs> he's yours. So that's good. Um, so, are there any questions about your about the, uh, about this? Is there something that you would like me to answer before I say goodbye for today? Um, again, if you have um, any questions, you can go to um, either my person. I mean, by my person, my, my personal page, which is Gwen Sacconi, or you can go to my art page, which is Gwen Sacconi Fine Art. Either one, I answer uh, them. If you have, um, so if you have any questions, you can always answer, ask me there. Or if you have any comments or suggestions for what you would like to do. Also, um, I'm going to put in the comments the, um, the, the name again of uh, the group, which is called Fun Friday Art Group. And that's a private group that you can join. And only people who uh, do the art show will be part of it. And, um, and you can post your artwork there. And you can also make suggestions there too. And, um, and that's where I'm gonna also post the picture, the historic picture of a unicorn. And I'll also post um, my, my daughter Gina's video there too. So you'll get a chance to watch that if you would like to. So, uh, Kylie has some, what's your question, Kylie? You have question marks, but you don't have any question. Oh, what are we drawing next week? Well, see, that's what we have to figure out. I gotta figure out what we're gonna draw next week. Oh, Kylie was making a su suggestion, like a jet ski or a roller skate. Hmm, now there's a suggestion, but you did this week's suggestion, so I'm gonna see if I can get some other suggestions uh, from other people who might like to, to uh, put, put a suggestion in. But those are good suggestions, Kylie. Uh, a little tricky, I think, but <laughs> we, can, we can go from there. Alrighty, so if there's no more questions, I am gonna go ahead and say goodbye for today. I hope you enjoy your weekend, and I look forward to uh, getting to maybe to see your artwork soon, and uh, also getting to um, hear your ideas for next week's art. Alrighty, take care, bye-bye.